Hello students, the topic is data link layer, which is the second layer of, of the network model if we move from the bottom. So in this lecture, we will discuss the data link layer in detail. So first of all, uh, let us read this data link layer, the data link layer, the second layer of the seventh layer OSI model of computer networking. So we will be uh, discussing the different uh, functions of the data link layer in this lecture. Uh, basically, its main function is to detect the errors and uh, it is responsible for the data flow. So what are the different terms we will discuss in, in this lecture that are the segments, packets, datagrams and frames are used in different uh, articles to convey the different meanings. Uh, PDU, these are known as the PDU, the protocol data units. So the segments, packets, datagrams, frames, all these are known as the PDUs that is the protocol data unit right so in data link layer uh, the, the transmission or information is transmitted in the form of the frames so how is framing done right so you can see that the framing in the data link layer separates a message from one source to a destination or from other messages to destination so it receives when it receives some information that is in the form of the you can say that it is in the form of the packets right so it makes frames of that packets so this is the uh, pdu of the data link layer so we can do the framing of two types the one is the fixed size framing and the other is the variable sized framing right so in in order to uh, in case of the fixed size framing we do not need to define any sort of the indication or the pointers or any sort of the boundaries uh, that now our frame has ended because uh, it is a fixed size frame right so no need to use any sort of the headers in case of the fixed size framing but when we are uh, dealing with the variable size framing we need to indicate the beginning and the end of the frame right so at the destination for node uh, one must be sure that I have received all the frames of the message right so in, in in order to ensure that we uh, should we should use some pointers or headers in our frames to indicate the beginning or ending of the frame right in case of the variable size framing only now the noiseless channels here we can see let us first assume we have an ideal channel in which no frames are lost duplicated or corrupted see in a channel when we uh, lost any frames or any frame is corrupted we may face a different sort of the issue which include the noise or the disturbance in the channel so for this purpose we introduce two things or the two protocols the first one is the simplest protocol and the second one is the stop and wait protocol right so we use these two protocols in order to deal in with the uh, disturbances or inferences in the channel the next is the in order to variable size framing we as we discussed that we have to use some uh, different headers or the indicators to indicate that our frame has started has just started or has just ended right so we need to indicate the beginning or ending of the frame so for that purpose we can use two things that is the character oriented protocol in the character oriented protocol we use make use of the flags at the start and end of the uh, frame See, right this is our frame here we are having some header where we must be having the source or the destination address here this is our data or uh, we are having some characters over here right and the end and the beginning and ending is indicated by the or highlighted by using the flag so this is about the character oriented protocols so what is the bit oriented protocol so the bit oriented protocol we can say that in the flag we will be using the some bits to indicate the start of the frame or the end of the frame here you can see in the flags we have used bits so zero ones are the bits right so what will be the size of that <clears throat> flag that will be the special 8 bit pattern flag right 8 bits we can use in our flag so this was about the bit oriented protocols so this is the function of the data link layer that is the flow and error control it is uh, Flow control refer to a set of procedure used to restrict the amount of data that the sender can send before waiting for the acknowledgement, right? So 
it is a data link layer it's a duty of the data link layer to ensure the efficient conveyance of the data from the source to the destination in case any uh, error it faced while transmission of the data data link layer must rectify that error and remove all the bugs and retransmit the data after receiving the acknowledgement right so these two are the functions of the data link layer now the protocols that is using the data link layer that is acknowledgement it is an acknowledgement based layer right so the protocols and we can also have the negative acknowledgement what does negative acknowledgement means that it can flow in the opposite direction for uh, flow or error control purposes uh, uh, but the data in such case flows in only one direction right so this is the negative acknowledgement now we are having uh, taxonomy of the protocols for the noisy channel uh, for the noiseless channel we have two protocols that is simplest protocols and stop weight protocols and uh, we are having for the no noisy channels stop and wait arq go back and arq selective repeat arq right so in the stop and wait it will wait for the acknowledge it will after sending the data to a destination it will wait and then uh, wait for the uh, it will stop and then wait for the acknowledgement and after receiving the acknowledgement it will decide its next step right so this was about the te taxonomy of the protocol in case of the noiseless channels uh, sim simplest protocol is the protocol that neither has flow control nor has error control right so in that case we will be using the simplest protocol here you can see that we are having the sender on this side on the receiver on that side so here we are sending a frame right so it is arriving at the receiver end again a frame is sent arrived at the receiver end again a frame is sent and arrived at the receivers and without any uh, error or without any loss of the frame right so in noiseless channel we use the simplest frames so this is how the simplest protocol is designed with no flow or error control you can see that it is we are here it is the sender and uh, in between they have used the data link layer so in order to ensure the efficient conveyance or the transmission of the data right so no need to discuss it in detail it's a very simple diagram you can take a look at it that uh, it is this design of the simplest protocol right so again it is the same example for that is the flow diagram as we discussed earlier that the frame is uh, efficient conveyance of the frame right so here you can see that uh, that maybe for the stop and wait protocol right so here if uh, we are sending a frame from the sender node a to the receiver node b here if the node is arrived at the receiver node b it will send some acknowledgement that yes i have received the frame again if we send the frame uh, to the re receiver node b so it will again send some acknowledgement so it will say that yes i have received the frame or in case of any error or loss of the frame it will that uh, it will say that i haven't received the frame please resend it right so it will resend the frame so this is the design of the stop and wait protocol uh further we will discuss that what are the requirements for the error control mechanism that is the error detection positive acknowledgement negative acknowledgement retransmission right so what is the error detection the sender and receiver either both or any must ascertain that there is no error in the transmit right so the transmission that there the efficient uh, transmission took place so there was no error right positive acknowledgement so when the receiver receives a correct frame from the senders and it should acknowledge it that yes i have received the correct frame negative acknowledgement that when the receiver receives a damaged frame or a duplicate frame it sends a negative acknowledgement back to the sender that the sender must retransmit the correct frame i have received the duplicate one right so the retransmission process is the sender maintains a clock and sets a timeout period if an acknowledgement of data frame previously transmitted does not arrive before the timeout the sender retransmits the frame thinking that the frame or its acknowledgement is lost in transmit right so in this uh, retransmission the sender can do retransmission in two cases 
the one is that if the frame is lost or the second is the receiver has received the frame but the acknowledgement he sent to me that is lost in the transmit or in the way right so it will resend the uh, frame error detection in stop and wait arq is done by keeping a copy of the send frame and retransmitting of the frame when the time expired so the stop and wait arq keeps a co copy of the frame with it and after when the specific time expires it retransmits that uh, that frame that copy of the frame in stop and wait arq we use sequence numbers to number the frames right so it is using some uh, pointers to indicate that how many frames i have sent right in stop and wait uh, arq the acknowledgement number always announces in the sequence number of the next frame expected right so the acknowledge number um, tells us what will be the sequence number of the next frame a frame expected to be arrived right so this is the design here you can see that this is the sequence number right at the start zero and then again the next will be one right so sequence numbers tells us that what will be the next frame what will be the next frame arrived right so this was all about the data link here and we discussed the protocols of it in detail